My man Zar make tracks like this. What's going on y'all? So a lot of you have emailed me and wanted me to do a video on converters and explaining them. Uh, in my introduction to audio engineering course on Udemy, I go into a little bit about converters. This video I'll explain them a little bit further. So converters are, you have two types of converters. You have A to D and D to A. And you'll see those listed as A slash D for analog to digital or ADC, analog digital converter, or D slash A for digital to analog or DAC, digital analog converter. So what converters do is they convert our audio signal from analog to digital or digital to analog. A really easy way to understand the difference between the two is analog to digital is what you record and digital to analog is what you hear. So anything analog is outside of the computer, anything digital is inside of the computer. So let's take a vocal for example. So you speak into a microphone and your voice, which is analog, goes through the microphone, from the microphone to the preamp, from the preamp to your A to D converter. Once the signal hits the A to D converter, it's going to convert it into digital, which is what you see in the computer or in your DAW. So anything inside the computer is digital. Just keep that in mind. Anything outside of the computer is analog. So the same way or with your D to A conversion, you would, your signal from the DAW would come out of the outputs of the D to A converter and they would come out of your speakers, which you would hear as analog. So again, A to D is what you record, D to A is what you hear. So there's a lot of, oh, let me get into audio interfaces. So a lot of people have asked me, do audio interfaces have converters in them? They do. Your interface converts the signal from analog to digital as you record it and the outputs are your D to A converters when you connect to your monitors to here. So audio interfaces absolutely have converters in them. Now there are more high-end or standalone converters that you can purchase and connect to your audio interface. Because think, your audio interface has your mic pre's, has headphones out, line ins, uh, your audio interface is your central device to get from analog to your DAW, which is digital. So standalone converters, uh, for example, I, ha I use the Orion, uh, the Antelope Orion 32, which is a 32 channel A to D, D to A converter. There's no mic pre's on it, it's just straight conversion for all of the channels. I also have the Antelope Pier 2, which is a two-channel mastering A to D and D to A converter. So let's go back to AD. What your analog to digital conversion does, because your signal is coming in analog and needs to be converted to digital to see in the computer, the better your analog to digital converter is, the more accurately it will take that analog signal and it basically takes a snapshot of it depending on your sample rate and it's going to as accurately as it can recreate that signal in the digital domain in the DAW. So the better your A to D converter is the more accurately that will happen. The same thing on the other end for the D to A. The more the better your D to A converter is, the more accurately it will represent what's coming out of your monitors. Now, D to A conversion, this also has to deal with your room. So if you have a room that's not treated, you know, sound will bounce off plaster, bounce off walls. If your room isn't treated, you could have the most expensive D to A converter in the world. It's really not going to make much of a difference for you because even though you're, you have a really high quality D to A converter, the sound coming out of the monitors, you're still not hearing accurately because of the elements in the room. So 
a lot of people ask me, do they need to get converters? I tell them you already have converters in your interface. However, if you're looking for a upgrade to your converters, there's just certain things I would keep in mind. Um, I say converters are important, but to me they don't make the they don't make or break your sound. Uh, to me, there's a lot of other variables that comes into play before the A to D conversion happens. Mainly with vocals, your your mic, your mic pre, the room you're recording in, all of this matters in because all of this is being done before it even hits your A to D. So, and like I just explained with the same thing with the D to A. You know, your room, uh, having it treated, all of this comes into play with your D-Day conversion as well. So, you know, do you need converters? You do. They are absolutely important to audio because you have to get in and out of the computer. But there's just other things that I would look into uh, making sure it's right before you look at, you know, spending a 1000 or 2000 on on some converters. Now, some interfaces also have high-end converters on them as well. So, and don't worry, uh, don't get too bogged down about specs and looking at specs for these converters and thinking that because one is spec higher, it's better. Everyone hears differently, so the best way to test these converters is to really use them yourself and see if you like what they sound like when you record with them or listen back through them. So let's take a look at how to connect a D to A or A to D converter to your interface. So with this example, I've got the back of the Antelope Pier 2, which is their mastering two channel A to D, D to A converter, and the back of the Antelope Orion 32, which is their 32 channel converter. So these are two units that I use in my setup, and I'm gonna show you how to connect them. So even if you don't have an Orion, uh, Let's say you want to connect a D to A, A to D converter to your interface. So the things you're going to need are digital cables to do this. Uh, digital cable being an AES cable, ADAT cable, or SPDIF. SPDIF, I would say, is the most popular. Uh, most audio interfaces have a SPDIF output and input on them that you can use for this. So we'll start with the D to A. So with the back of the Orion 32, we've got our, our SPDIF out here and our SPDIF in. We want to go SPDIF out. And on the Pier 2, we would go SPDIF in. So output, SPDIF out from your interface to SPDIF in of the D to A converter. So what this would do is on the Orion, when your signal comes out of the SPDIF output, it's digital. It's going to continue to be digital until it gets into the Pier 2 where it would come out of the analog outputs over here, and that would make the sound analog. That would be your D to A conversion. And again, the D to A is what you hear. Uh, think of D to A as outputs and A to D as inputs. So for the A to D conversion side, we would do the opposite. So we would start from the Pier 2 on this end. We want to go SPDIF out of the Pier 2 into SPDIF in on the Orion. Therefore, when we record into the Pier 2, which you see we have our analog inputs here on the right side of the Pier 2, what we record into the Pier 2 would get converted to digital. The digital signal would come out of the SPDIF out and would come into the Orion SPDIF in as digital, continuing being digital, and that would then show in the DAW. So SPDIF cables are... Spit of cables are a, a real easy way to connect the A to D and D to A converters. Uh, all, all that I've seen, D to A, D to A converters will have spit if on them. AES is another way you can go, but you won't find AES on a lot of interfaces. So definitely, I would recommend uh, spit if. And SPDIF carries two channels. Uh, you could also use ADAT, but ADAT carries eight channels. I kind of feel like I'm wasting channel count using an eight-channel cable, a, a cable that can carry eight channels when I'm just using uh, one or two channels for my conversion. So that's another thing to keep in mind there. All right, so that's converters explained and how to connect a A to D and D to A converter to your 
interface. Also, the last thing I forgot, what you would do in your DAW or your interface control panel is then you'd want to assign your spit of inputs and outputs to certain channels. Uh, so, for example, I have routed in my Orion, I've routed channels 15 and 16 to be spit of in and spit of out. Therefore, in the DAW, when I want to record through the Pier 2, on my inputs, I would select 15 and 16. Or you can select your spit of in. I just renamed it to Pier 2 in mine, Pier 2 in and Pier 2 out. So in your DAW, you want to select the input of your spit of or the output of your spit of if you want to monitor from it. All right, I'll catch y'all next time.